Eclipsed, it's making history on Broadway. It's the first play ever to be written by, directed by, produced by, and starring black women. And its playwright, Zimbabwean-American Danai Karira, believes it's about time. The play features Academy Award winner Lapita Nyong'o. It's set among the chaos of the Liberian Civil War. It tells the story of captive wives of a rebel officer. You may know Danai for her work as an actress. She's the star of the popular TV series The Walking Dead, but she's bringing to life global problems in her plays. Her personal mandate is to break down cultural barriers by creating more opportunities for talented young black women like herself. And Danai joins us now, and we want to welcome you to Full Frame. Thank you. Let me ask you about uh, Eclipse. Um, what prompted you to write it? Uh, so many things. I've always been a writer that wanted to tell stories of African women. And so to come across the story I came across, which was literally an article in the New York Times about women rebel fighters, this was in 2003, when the war in Liberia was at its height. And I was in grad school uh, at Tisch down the road, Tisch School of the Arts. And I was like, what is this? I've never seen African women in this, uh, portrayed in this way. They were, had AK 47s and little, tight jeans and little tops on and hair done up, but they were formidable, frightening women of war. And I just had never seen that before. So I knew I had to pursue that narrative. And I only got around to doing it after my first play in the continuum had concluded its run, because I was performing in that play. And then the next thing I knew I had to do was pursue the narrative of African women in war th through the Liberian war story. And uh, that's uh, how it got started, actually. But pursuing it meant Going to the it meant source. Many things. Yeah. It meant going to the source. It meant uh, doing a lot of research. It meant connecting with a lot of people. Going to the source meaning going to Liberia itself, and spending a lot of time with women uh, who, thank God, embraced me and uh, wanted to facilitate the story I was trying to tell, and shared with me things they some of them had never shared with anyone, and then trusted me to to create a to weave together a narrative that gave them voice. Uh, drawing that out though isn't easy, is it? Uh, no, actually, surprisingly, it was uh, it was easier than I would have expected. They, there was a trust that I received that I almost felt completely unworthy of. And when I would ask, I would always flip the, t the table around at the end of an interview and ask them to ask me anything they wanted to know. Uh, and they often, I was told, we're just glad that you've come here and asked us. No one, usually, no one's ever asked me. And I got that so many times, the concept that no one's ever asked me what happened to me. And uh, one mother told me the most devastating story I've ever heard about her daughter and how she died. And um, she had been asked many a time about her story. And she really railed into me when I first met her about people coming and asking her and asking her. And I said, I so agree. And I said, I, I can leave right now. And I totally understand that this is invasive. And she said, no, stay where you are, because it helps me to share this with you. It helps my heart to share the burden. And um, so it was really kind of this amazing experience, very uh, transforming for me, actually, to spend time with these women. But holding on to their stories and bringing their stories to life, I mean, that's a burden in itself for you, because you want to stay true to their story. You want that story out there. And I always suspect when somebody's writing this story, when they're sitting there at the keyboard, replaying in their mind what they've heard, that the tears must come cascading down. I mean, talk to me about that emotional period of putting it to paper. Well, I mean, the thing that uh, is very important is I, I immerse myself in all the research, all the voices, all the experiences um, that I can and really allow myself to really be soaked, saturated with it. And then I have to allow myself to, and this is going to sound like an irreverent term, but I have to allow myself to play because I have to allow characters to come to life that are full and rich and real and alive and whose voices I can hear, but they're their own voices. And so that that, um, it involves a myriad of emotions, and the play involves a myriad of emotions, because I'm showing women who are fully formed. They are women who have chosen to survive a brutal war zone, and they've chosen to do it through ways that you might find surprising. So it, it, I had to, uh, you have to allow yourself to play, and that, that, that means you, you navigate through several uh, different uh, experiences emotionally. And yes, at times it does, it should bring you to tears. You should, you should weep, and you should weep a lot. Uh, I have a friend of mine, uh, Lori Grinker, who's a photojournalist who was in Liberia during the Civil War and took some images uh, of child soldiers. And, and I remember one as this young boy, Otis, and you look at him and you look into his eyes and there's just nothing there. And about 12, 13 years old, and I said to her, I said, you know, you should go back like 10 years from now and take a photograph of him and see, you know, what's happened 
to this kid's life? How has he been damaged by this? And I'll, I'll never forget what she said. She said, yes, I should do that, but who would care? She was so frustrated by trying to cover that war and trying to get people interested in it. And yet you've been able to do that. Um, did you ever think there's going to be this barrier, like who's going to care about these women? Or did you just know, I'm going to make them care? You know, when you're born black and female, <laughs> The who's going to care question comes up, but you don't. Ha you you have to just ignore that. You have to look at. You have to have what I sometimes call your your fairy godmamas. You know your Maya Angelou's, your Harriet Tubman's. You know your Cicely Tyson's, whoever. But there are women who have broken barriers in the past. So that's your legacy. That's our. That has to be your legacy. Uh, you know you have to say this is. I care about this, and I'm going to do it to the best of my abilities, and I'm going to put it out there. And I believe that there there will be a response, and, and I'm just. I'm going to do it. And that's definitely uh, something I decided before I even started creating narratives, that I saw the lack, I saw the dearth of, of narratives that covered women of, from where I was from, and I, I was going to put it out there. And I can't, I can't second guess it or edit responses before I create it. I have to do what I'm called to do, which is to be a creator of works. The right, I have to trust that the right people will come along and receive those works and will champion those works. But I can't stop myself before I start because then I'm depriving someone of their voice. And speaking of championing, uh, it, it's pretty amazing. I mean, the playwright, the director, the actresses, I mean, it's all out there. Uh, it, it, was any of it a challenge or were you just like hard charging, I'm going to make this happen? Well, listen, I mean, it's all a process. It's all a process step by step by step. And actually, it's not the first, it's the first play on Broadway with an all-female creative team, not just all black female. There's never been a play on Broadway with a woman director, woman writer, and woman cast um, of any color. So that is kind of an, an, an amazing realization um, that uh, we still had that barrier to, to break. And, and strangely and amazingly enough, it was done by a play about African women, by African women, our cast. And our creative team is all African, except for one uh, Haitian who might as well be African. <laughs> um, so Honorary that is. Member. Huh? Honorary member. Yes, completely. <laughs> uh, so you know there is uh, very much there's something very special about that. But yes, I mean there. I was saying, I was thinking this earlier. There's definitely something about intention. You have to function with intention. And also for me as an artist, I listen to the nature of the beast. This particular play, it was definitely a play I was going to create with an all female cast. There was uh, the the title Eclipsed is about the light that's blocked. A, some people in the world we don't get to see, we don't get to hear, but they have such astounding potential. And the point of the play is you're going to sit with them for two hours and you're going to walk away and never think of them as just a statistic again. That's the goal. So uh, yes, definitely I, it was very intentional to create an all-female cast, not to have a story about women, but some man is, is at, the, at the core being you know, seen and heard a lot. You know, No, let's just take them out of the equation. All we ever hear about when we hear about war are men. So how is, is men? So how about we just take men out of the equations and look at the women and see the experiences they have, that they have as a result of wars that they didn't create. Um, so that was definitely intentional. Having a female director, what I call these actresses to do with what's on the page is, is no small feat. I mean, honestly, they have to, at the, you know, at the, at the, the flip of a dime, they have to turn from being humorous and, and, and very, um, you know, quirky and alive in their characters' idiosyncrasies to being very, very caught in, in the darkest of trauma. So they have to have quite a breadth of humanity. They also have to be quite fearless. They also have to be a deeply cohesive uh, unit and ensemble. So all these things required to me, after some experiences I had in the very beginning, I knew it required a female director. And that was um, uh, something Liesl Tommy just fit like a glove with this narrative from the get-go. And, and though there have been several productions across the world at this point, um, she's definitely the director who I feel fits like a glove with this narrative. Uh, it's interesting you think of the two H's, heavy. I mean, it's heavy material, but humor, and humor was, is, is definitely a part of this play. How important was it in, in helping to drive the narrative? 
Very important. I mean, to me, I think uh, my goal is definitely to be very authentic, but also accessible. But my goal is also to give the fullest breadth and multidimensionality to the African narrative. And I think that that is something that I grew up not finding, not seeing, searching for, and finally having to do it myself. <laughs> and so, uh, yes, it was very important to me to find these. And they really spoke to me. I know it's going to sound a little kooky, but uh, some writers will say this, and uh, I'm no exception, that narratives or characters start to talk to you and you start to hear them and you start to hear their voices and they start to just um, you start to just write what you're hearing and uh, that was definitely the case with some of the humor that I found when these women just became more and more alive to me and uh, yeah it was it was it was important from that perspective just the authenticity of telling full character stories but also I look to disarm my audience especially Western audiences uh, who don't expect they as as was mentioned earlier you sometimes you, you expect to just, oh my God, it's going to be so heavy and I'm going to have such a terrible time because I'm just going to be like taking my medicine about the issues of the global community. <laughs> but like, I, I want you to actually have a full meal. I want you to walk out of the theater having been stimulated in various ways. And uh, definitely, I'm going to sucker punch you. I'm going to make sure that you get hit in the, go in the, in the solar plexus. But I also want you to, to laugh and enjoy these women. I want you to have a full experience because that you will you know, will resonate with you longer. Well, clearly you've given them the opportunity and the folks who go see it, it's uh, very powerful. It was a fantastic so. ensemble. I'm very blessed to have them. Thank you so much for coming in. Thank Appreciate you. it. Thank you. Thank you. We'll be back with this week's Full Frame Close-Up right after this.